Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Well, welcome, folks, to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name's Steve Lacey. And I'm Phil Thompson. I just realized I kicked in the radio mode there, didn't I? I, I, did I sound like an announcer? You I did. You did. always do, right? Well, I guess because I've because it's in your blood. I did it for twenty years, but I did. We were just talking off mic here, and and all of a sudden, when I did the intro, I sounded like some kind of a radio guy. <laughs> there was a guy by the name of Gary Owens years ago, but I'm dating oh, yes. myself. All right. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I remember him. That's was because, it behind what's behind door number one, or was it? Yeah, I think he was on Laugh In too, but. Oh. Our guest today is so young, he would never know who Gary Owens is or was, but we won't get into that. But real quickly, before we start, uh, we're a company called JSL Solutions, and uh, we uh, we work with churches, we work with ministries, we provide things like? Uh, live streaming, uh, mobile apps, um, church management systems, and websites. All right, good. So, Steve, you passed the first test. Good job. All right, so our guest today is uh, Phil Bodell. Is it oh. is it Bodell or Bodel? Bodel. Bodel. See, I screwed it up again. I'm so <laughs> Phil sorry. Phil is the master with names. <laughs> I, I goof up words all the time. So, Phil Phil uh, Bodel. Bodel. Yes. Got it. Like okay. taking a bow. Phil, I am so sorry. I messed up your 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 name. But how are you today? Uh, I'm doing great, guys. Okay. Uh, so Phil is the creative arts pastor at West Ridge Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, he has been there for a number of years. Uh, Phil, again, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So, Phil, uh, very quickly, uh, and we're going to talk about Instagram today. We've talked a lot about different social media tools on this podcast over the over the years, but uh, before we get into Instagram, uh, tell me, what is the Creative Arts Pastor? What do you do? Tell me just a very quickly, a little typical day for you. Sure. Well, a typical day is that there's no typical day. <laughs> so some some days can be locked into meetings. Um, sometimes I'm off site, uh, dreaming, planning around our our services, the stories we're sharing, um, you know, the way that we're communicating. So overall, my my, my goal is to do two things: is, is to tell one consistent story through the church and to put put Jesus Christ on display. And so we do that through a couple different ways. Um, we it, the the team that I over oversee includes four basic areas, our uh, communications department, our media department, and then our worship and our production teams as well. And so all those things merge together and, and fit together in some ways. And, and I want my, my goal is to help tell one story through all those things. And so our biggest outlet of that, obviously, is, is our services. So every Sunday we're trying to um, put those things together in a way that is going to um, create just a, a powerful worship experience for people and put, put Christ on display. So, But during the week we try to make Sunday not end – on Sunday and, and connect that from Monday to Saturday and engage people uh, on places like Instagram and, and social media and, and connect with them in that way. So it's a, it's an awesome role. It's fun to every week is different. Uh, every season's different in some ways as well, but I, I get to serve with an incredible team of some talented creative folks and it's, it's a great place to be. I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So I was uh, visiting your website and I saw the, uh, the Christmas video. Mm-hmm. That was uh, very entertaining and, yeah. and something you wouldn't expect from a, a on a church website you know introducing uh-huh. christmas so you guys had they had a did you see it phil i didn't see it no i missed yeah. it they had a everybody was singing was it jingle bells and yes it, we we used a ben rector song um of jingle bells yes <laughs> yeah and so everyone they go through starting from they just it's a bunch of handoffs i guess you got to see it to Really appreciate it, but so they're it's, it's at having the, a lot of fun. I can tell. <laughs> so it's at West Ridge Church, uh, their website. There, I guess is that in case people want to see that. Uh, how large is West Ridge? Um, so typically on a Sunday, we're between four or five thousand people, um, and you know, on around Easter or Christmas, we're, we're usually pulling in about ten thousand. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, uh, and how many services do you guys do? We do three services. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Good deal. Well, all right. So let's talk a little bit today about Instagram because we've never covered that before. I have an Instagram account. Uh, I probably don't use it right. But uh, (laughs) first of all, for people who maybe are not real familiar 
with Instagram, uh, do, you know, what is Instagram and what what makes it different maybe from some of the other social media tools out there? Yeah, it's it's interesting about Instagram. I mean, it, when you look at the legacy of social media, um, Facebook put everything on on the scene, you know, of of being the first platform that kind of became this is where everybody is. And as Facebook got more and more complicated in some ways, more and more ads and um, and more and more people using it, what happens with that is more and more people are are using it in ways that sometimes isn't as, as fun or engaging for people. So when Instagram, uh, Instagram came on the scene, what was interesting about it is that it kind of simplified a lot of things in social media. It focused on what, what worked on Instagram was a compelling photo and a compelling story. Mm -hmm. And instead of just information and thoughts. Um, so people just, you know, talking politics or things like that usually didn't, find themselves on Instagram as much Facebook or Twitter was more of the platform. And so what's, in, what's interesting about Instagram is it, it really is at its best. It's a storytelling platform and we're all moved by stories. And so when you look at um, what even moves us on these, these other platforms, it, it's stories, it's not um, banter. So there's a really unique um, way for the church to be able to use Instagram in a, in, a, in a way that's not just about promotion, not about um, getting people to events, but about engaging people and, and telling the story of what God's doing in your church. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the word story here, because when I remember signing up for an Instagram account, when it first came out, uh, I, I just saw it as a place to, you know, post some pictures and, and, and have fun with it, that kind of a thing. I didn't really think much about the, the story aspect of it. And, and so how, how does the story aspect fit? I mean, how does that work with, with pictures? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, what's that old ad, adage? I mean, of, of a picture's worth a thousand words. I mean, I think, um, there's pictures can have an emotional appeal and, and a story appeal. I mean, you can, you can look at a photo and build the story for yourself of it. Um, sometimes, I mean, you look at some of the compelling images we've just seen from Syria lately. I mean, you don't need to say anything uh, about it. I mean, that story moves you in different yes. ways. And what's cool about it is it mo moves different people in different ways. Um, so that's, what's so powerful about, um, about a photo and, and really not just thinking of, uh, the the challenge we have as creatives is how do we how do we move people through a picture or an image instead of just words? And then with Instagram, we have an opportunity to kind of pull both of those things together. And the the goal is that your words and your that your words can complement and clarify the story instead of um, you know be a be the only source of story in that way. So um, e even with Instagram, though, I mean, there's so much noise there, so many people that are using it that it really does take a compelling image, a compelling story to stand out. Um, people are scrolling through Instagram just like they're scrolling through websites. I mean, there it takes something to stand out for it to grab your attention. And um, that's that's the that's the opportunity we have through stories, I think, to be able to to do something that captures an emotion and a feeling, um, some kind of action that that calls for a response. And sometimes that response is just to get to get somebody's attention <laughs> uh, to be able to um, have an opportunity to share and tell a story that people can engage in. Absolutely. Uh, Instagram Live, It's that's kind of a newer part of Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. where people can actually do a video, do a live video. Uh, can you can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, I, I think it, we're seeing all these platforms start to lend itself towards if you're not if you don't have ability to do live, you you're missing out, you know, and I think uh, with all of the, as, as social media has gotten more and more programmed in some ways, I mean, there's probably hundreds of sites out there that can schedule your stuff. Um, there's something special about being live. There's something special about seeing something as it happens. And, um, and it, it, there's a raw authenticity to that. And I think people are craving that now more, more than ever. I mean, if just to see something live as it's happening and to engage with it in real time, it kind of makes a big world feel small and a, and a big community feel small in that way. And so there's really cool opportunities for, for something like live to be able to do, to do just that is to create raw, real, authentic moments. Um, we tend to, uh, eat, what I like about Instagram is it gives you an opportunity to be the real, raw, authentic version of yourself 
Um, or it gives you an opportunity to be the plastic version of yourself, you know, and ph- Photoshop everything. Um, but it's a chance for you to actually tell the real version, a real authentic version of, of you as a church. And I think people, goodness, especially in, in our churches, the, the opportunity we have to be the real, um, to be real and authentic is uh, honestly, that's something that will make you stand out. It's not going to isolate you because people are craving that more than ever. Uh, they want to see their pastors, their leaders, um, the people they may see on stage or the people that they see behind the scenes um, to to get their real story, not the polished version of, of them. I mean, we, I, the thing that has always drawn me about some leaders is that the people that kind of reveal their scars are, are we're so much more drawn to them than we are the people that feel like they never make a mistake. And so, um, it, all that, that, that's kind of the, the, deeper level of, of, you know, Instagram or Facebook live or anything like that. But at, at the end of the day, I think that is a, it, that is a chance not just to, you know, be, get more announcements out or, or, you know, just be, be fun about it. It, it really is a chance to be authentic and, and show somebody something that they wouldn't otherwise see. Do, um, do you have some examples of some of the things that you've done, um, at your church? Do you like, barge into the senior pastor's office and say, you're live on Instagram. What do you have? That's to say? a, that's a really good idea. I, 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 <laughs> the, well, this Sunday, make sure you're following on, on Instagram. We might do that. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think a, a couple things of it, it, the real time aspect aspect of it, it draws more attention than the, than the other stuff. And so even um, last Easter, we used Facebook live for this. This was actually before Instagram live was, was launched. Um, but we would, we would use it the same way here of, we had, during our Easter service, we were our nine. We have three services. We have a nine o'clock, eleven o'clock, and a twelve forty-five. And when our nine o'clock is packed, you know, when we're in overflow at nine o'clock, we know eleven o'clock we are going to get absolutely slammed, which is a a good problem to have. Um, so during the nine o'clock message, uh, our our communications team took one of our our pastors outside and did a live video of just saying, "Hey, if there's any, we are pumped about what God's doing today. We got a full house today, and if there's any chance that you can adjust to be able to." To come to the 1245, that would make a, a huge difference to help the first time guests coming in for the first time to have a great experience. And we probably saw an uptick of two or 300 people at our 1245 because they saw one message um, live. And so that's the power of it, of just even leveraging story of what God's doing in your church that day to be able to create movement and action and, and a next step. So you can do that. The other things that we've done is capture a you know, a song, a moment or, uh, of something that we're going to be doing that upcoming Sunday, just to be able to connect one to one instead of one to all. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's hard to do that in a, a setting at, on a Sunday morning when you're talking to a hundred people or a thousand or whatever it is. But Instagram, you you got a chance, even though you're you know, seeing the person on the other side of the screen, you're you have a chance to speak to one person and connect with them in that way. Um, so you know that's that we leading up to a um, a night of worship that we did, we tried to use live video in different ways like that just to connect with people and and get requests in. You know, for people to say what song are you hoping to hear, and um, be able to actually do a song just for that person. And through that, it just it creates a cool. Um, experience for that people aren't expecting um in in some ways they are expecting but they're surprised by it when they actually get one-on-one engagement from somebody um on a you know on a big church platform or anything like that so um it really is a cool way to to engage people in in a different platform It's it's a different tool in the toolbox to be considering for sure yeah that's a good idea i was just thinking at our church you know we've done some um some different podcasts and one of them that was really popular was going behind the scenes. It'd probably be a good idea to Instagram live, uh, you know, what's going on with, uh, you know, different people that are putting on the service. Yeah. And what's, what's even interesting about how just looking big picture at social media right now, you have Instagram and Facebook that both have live. Um, you have Snapchat that has a very live esque vibe to it anyway. Um, and so strategically, you, you kind of have some you have some different ways that you can leverage a lot of these platforms in, in a somewhat similar way. I mean, each of them have their own nuances to them that make them unique and and um, and more authentic to that platform. Um you wouldn't do some things on Snapchat that you do on Twitter, you know, or or vice versa and stuff. So, but you know, there is a way to think it it can be overwhelming with how many platforms there are out there. But if you just think of what are some ways that we can connect with people in a live 
short, short engagement time um, for for what we're doing as a church. I mean, you can think about that from there of saying, okay, how can we use Facebook Live or Instagram Live, or is this a short, live feeling message that we're going to do on on Snapchat or something like that? So there's, um, it, it's funny how all of these platforms are getting more and more different each day and more and more of the same <laughs> as we go. Yeah, so Phil, uh, West Ridge Church is, you know, we already talked about, it, you know, you, you've got a large church there, thousands of people. But what if I'm uh, li- listening to this podcast? I'm, uh, you know, maybe I a pastor of church of 150 or 200 people, or maybe I'm, you know, a volunteer. Uh, how do I use Instagram? I mean, where do I start? Be, you know, if, I, if I'm working with a, you know, a small, medium sized church and mm-hmm. I've never done this before, what would be some advice? On, on some starting points to using Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, the, the biggest thing I would say is something not to do, and that's to think of social media in general and especially Instagram as a way to get people to come to events. Um, Instagram is not um, is not a promotional platform. It's a engaging storytelling platform. And so for that, that, there's ways that you can promote, but you have to wrap it in story. And so for a for any church, you know, whether it's it's small or large, I mean, I think for a pastor to even be thinking about, you know, two to three posts during a week of ways that they can help um, it, use that as a way to encourage and inspire people. Um, and that might be on a on a Monday morning, you know, if you have. If you even just the goal of three posts a week of Monday morning doing some kind of inspirational um, post of just something that God's teaching you, something that um, would would maybe encourage somebody in their walk with Christ. Um, so thinking about that on a Monday and then on a on a Wednesday or a Thursday to be able to to capture something of where you're going that Sunday to say, hey, here's what God's teaching me right now. And here's what I'm wrestling with through this topic that we're going to be covering on Sunday. Or maybe that's a big question that you're you're hoping to answer on Sunday and to pose that question to other people on social media of, of saying, you know, how are you wrestling with this issue or what questions would you have under this this idea and stuff just to get two way conversation going. And then Sunday to capture something that people wouldn't otherwise see. Um, if that's a volunteer that you notice every week that is just killing it and doing a great job and, and um, it needs to be encouraged maybe to, to take a photo of that person, you know, with them, you know, like to, to do a selfie with them or something like that, that just lets, let, lets your church feel, feel small in some ways and see something they wouldn't otherwise see or encourage people in that. Even three things like that, if you built a little bit of a rhythm for that, that's probably what maybe, you know, 30 15 to 30 minutes a week that you could dedicate to it. I, I promise you that's going to have much more return um, than, than other ways that you could spend 15 minutes uh, on that. So, you know, keep it simple, keep it, keep it, think, help people see a um, something that they wouldn't otherwise see and, um, and use it as a way to just tell the story of what God's doing in your life and in your church. And you'll be surprised by how that's, that kind of content stands out, um, in the midst of so much other junk that can be on social media. I mean, I think the, the thing that has always been a burden for me on how we, we leverage social media is that, you know, there's a, it hit me one, one morning when, unfortunately I still, as a way to start trying to wake up in the morning, I usually um, roll over and grab my phone and just check out what I missed. And it hit me one time. I'm like, okay, everything I just read on two different platforms was pretty dark and depressing, honestly. And what an opportunity we have as a church and as, as leaders in the church, whether you're a volunteer, whether you're a staff member or a pastor, what an opportunity we have to be a light in the midst of darkness and to point people um, towards hope and encouragement in, in, a, in a place where they probably are desperately needing it. Um, so we have a chance to do that no matter what your role is. All right. So are you, let's say I'm, I'm this small church, are you relying on the the senior pastor to create an Instagram account and then tell everybody to follow him? Or is the church going to create an account? Um, uh, what do you recommend? I, I recommend both. I mean, honestly, I would 
I would say every church can benefit from from a presence on there, but don't start something that you're not going to um, sustain. You know, so it's always even even if you're not ready to launch an account, it's probably good to go ahead and reserve your name and um, and get an account set up, even if you're not promoting it. But um, I, I think it's a it's a double edged sword. I think there's a church platform that you can have a specific church voice to connect with people in that way. But I think for pastors, you have an even more um, it, it, even more of an opportunity to to add to the conversation and, and provide a different point of view. Um, you know, the, the thing that's going to stand out on Instagram is not, uh, is not how polished your photo looks. You know, it's not how like it's, you don't have to have this, you know, $3,000 com- camera to do this or Photoshop. I mean, most of some of the best Instagram accounts out there are just a, um, somebody with an iPhone, you know, that's just capturing <laughs> photos in a good way. So it's not about, it's not about quality. It's about authenticity. And so using both a, a church platform or a, a pastor's platform or a leader's platform. Um, it, it, you know, it's not about all the tricks up your sleeve. It's about fig- figuring out how we can use that in an authentic way. Good. We're talking with uh, Phil Battle, who is uh, the uh, creative arts pastor here at West Ridge Church in Atlanta. Uh, Phil, let me get back to my practical side again, and that is, okay, I've started this Instagram account. Uh, how do I get people to follow me? Do I uh, do I send an email out? Do I send in something in my church newsletter saying, "Hey, we have an Instagram account"? I mean, just some tips uh, mm-hmm. from you on how you could get some followers to your Instagram account. I mean, I know there's things sure. like hashtags and those kind of things. Uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, it's a couple things. I, mean, I add it to the conversation on Sunday. You know, use that as a way, um, you know, even little things of just saying, hey, I just posted this. I I posted this question on Instagram this past this past Wednesday. If you're talking as a pastor, you know, mentioning something like this and got some of these feedback things, you know, so add it to the conversation. Even this Sunday, um, one of the things that we're going to be doing is sharing some prayer requests um, during our um, right after or right before our message and especially around the area of marriage. So we're going to be asking people if they would like to DM or direct message us or write in a comment a way that we can be praying for them, their family, something that's going on. And then on Sunday, we're going to be sharing some of those requests that we that we can say. And so we're going to lead off that conversation by saying, you know, we received some of these um, prayer requests on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter from, from you all uh, as a way. And so that's a subtle thing that just adds social media to the conversation. It doesn't feel like it's something outside that's happening, but it, it feels integrated into the experience experience that people are having as a church. So add it to the conversation. The second thing I think would be is putting it on your um, on your deliverables that you have. If that's print, if that's on your website, make it visible in that way. Um, just so that people are, are aware of that. Um, you can put it in pre-service announcement slides just to build awareness. I mean, it usually takes seven or eight touches for any any bit of information for people to actually take a resp- to take their next step and respond in some way. And so it takes multiple things. But all those things are, are foundational, I think. But at the end of the day, I think it's actually about um, – I mean, what do we all crave on social media? It's engagement. Mm-hmm. And so you have an opportunity to actually, as a church, engage into the conversation of what people are doing in your church. And so who says that is that the role of the um, church is just to sit back and watch and hopefully people will come and like you so that they can like your stuff? And that, that's a that's a selfish way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, I think as a church, you can say, hey, I'm going to follow in. I'm going to follow the people in our church. I'm going to follow people in our community. I'm going to add. I'm going to. Think of it like it's my own platform in that way and doing it with the church's voice. And so, you know, that think about the opportunities that lays out, even with 10 minutes a day to um, to follow. If you have, um, you know, 100 some people or 1000 some people on your on your um, that you're liking and, and connecting with that way, when somebody is. Um, think about what it would mean for the person that just ran a, a 5K or a marathon to just look down on their phone and see that their church liked their photo and wrote an encouraging post to saying, hey, well done, um, proud of you, way to go. Like that means a ton to, to, to get that engagement from their church and, and connect with them where they are. And what's going to happen if that person isn't liking the church? They're going to go like it. They're going to be – they're going to think, man, they, they just reached out to me in a way that I didn't even – didn't think they would, you know? And so I think it's much more of, it's, it's not wait and see. Um, it's not always build it. And, you know, it's not like field of dreams. If, if you build it, they will come. I mean, I think some people will, but um, build it and then go and, and go and bring people in and connect with people where they are. And that's where you're going to see engagement fly. Yeah. 
uh, we've got a couple minutes left here. Uh, a, qu- a question again about Instagram. Uh, are you finding that there is a certain group of people that, that really embrace Instagram? I'm talking here basically about ages. I mean, are mm-hmm. you seeing, uh, uh, younger people embrace, embracing Instagram? Are you seeing maybe, you know, how, how does Instagram work with people that are, uh, you know, like in their fifties or sixties? Mm-hmm. I mean, just from your experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I think honestly it's, it's grown more with each year. I think it's growing more and more. It's following a similar path as, uh, as Facebook did. I mean, Facebook started off as a college platform, you know, of just a handful of colleges and then, um, and then it turned into, you know, younger folks posting pictures of their grandkids and or, uh, pictures of their kids. And then the grandparents are like, Oh, oh you're not sending me the picture anymore. Yeah, I got to go find it. And so then they're on there and then, you know, you know where that goes. And so, um, I think Instagram is following a similar path and, um, and even I think all, all those platforms honestly are even Snapchat is growing more and more out of just a, a young adult platform and, and growing more and more into, um, young adults into um, 30s and 40s. And so I, at the end of the day, probably the sweet spot for Instagram is is people in their uh, between 15 and 35, you know, if I had to put a number to it. But it's certainly not limited to that. Uh, but I think if you can target that age range, you have a chance to to reach other people through it. Um, put the spotlight on on the, you know, like, young adults into, you know, like 18 to 30. And if you can hit that well and really create content that's going to connect with them, you're going to connect with other people as well. Yeah. Awesome. Good, good advice. Good stuff. So Phil, how can people uh, follow you uh, either Mm -hmm. on Instagram or maybe your blog? Can you give us some, uh, maybe your, 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 uh, your website, give us some, some uh, people for our listeners, some information for our listeners so people can, you know, can follow what you guys are doing. Sure. Yeah. If you if you just um, go to my website, Phil P H I L Bowdle B O W D L E dot com. Uh, if you go there, all all my platforms are linked there. But you can also find me at Phil Bowdle on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, and you can email me Phil at Phil Bowdle dot com as well. I'd love to connect with you. Awesome. Well, we sure appreciate you spending some some time with us today. It means a lot to us, and we're very thankful. Steve, do you have any last minute? Uh, no, this for, is for uh, this is really inspiring. I the the the, the piece that you or that we started off with, we were talking about Instagram is really for you know telling the story, and that's kind of what sets it apart. Is kind of what yeah. you know the message I took away from it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, and I think honestly, one of the things, one little last little bit of um, of advice I would say is if you think about what works on Instagram and leverage that on on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat, because if you target Facebook content, it's too scattered. It's every, it's everywhere. I mean, there's, you can do too much with it, honestly. Um, but if you can focus on what works on Instagram, which is stories and authenticity, leverage that same kind of, um, direction and content on other platforms. And I promise you, you're going to see engagement, um, and, and just, um, a level of <laughs> inspiration, um, skyrocketing through, through focusing on that. And, you know, I, we're pretty much out of time here, but one of the, the thoughts that came across my mind is now you can, you can actually sponsor your, your, uh, your images on mm-hmm. Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Are you guys doing that at all? We are. Yeah, we are. I mean, the <laughs> more than anything, what we try to do, I mean, that, that example you talked about earlier on the, on the web, um, on our site, we did a Christmas promo video and the, the, the only question we asked in, in coming up with an idea to promote Christmas was what would people want to share on social media? What would be something that would inspire people to share this with their friends? So I hate to say it, but the pastor video of him talking for four minutes, talking about, Hey, I can't wait for you to invite your friends is not going to be something that people are going to, to share with their friends. So we were inspired by an old video from the office of the way that they introduced a, a um, started off an episode of the office. And we, um, we took that same idea of, where they they kind of walk through the whole office area and everybody was kind of lip lip dubbing to a song and it was kind of choreographed and stuff but just a fun way to tell the personality of of your team and so we leveraged that kind of idea to launch what we did and so even just on just on facebook um it, organically i think we probably sponsored the post maybe 10 15 bucks a little bit but organically that post was reached i mean i think it had almost fifty thousand views uh because people were sharing it with their friends. And so it, leveraging it in that way is, is something that 
I mean, you can eat, sure you can benefit from sponsoring stuff, but if the content isn't isn't sticky and people don't want to engage with it anyway, you might reach more people, but you're probably not going to get as much response as creating something that's designed with that foundation from the beginning anyway. All right, good deal. All right, well, yeah. we're out of time, uh, folks. If you want to give us some feedback on this podcast, we always welcome it. Just send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv. That's one of our uh, one of our emails. We've got all sorts of websites out there and. Uh, you can just stick right now with streamingchurch.tv. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this podcast. If you have some questions for Phil, uh, Phil uh, Battle, he, all you have to do is uh, go to his website, p h i l b o w d l e dot com, and uh, that's his kind of his blog. He's got lots of good stuff on there that could help you and your church. And we are out of time, so thank you, Phil, for spending some time with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. All right. And uh, the guy across the table from me is Steve Lacey. I'm Phil Thompson. This has been the Church Solutions Podcast. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time on another edition. Take care.